we're seeing here soon. So, well, we wanted to want to welcome you all out today. We appreciate you signing into our webinar. We've got some great things planned. We're going to do this in about an hour. Oh, actually, so, uh, we're, we're shooting for 40 minutes. Remember? Shooting for 40 minutes. Four so minutes. We'll try to give you some nuggets. We wanted to first uh, just kind of qualify ourselves uh, or qualify um, the group here and find out if you guys could um, let us know, have you done all of the work? Uh, we're going to mute everybody. If you could just put it in the in, into the uh, the chat that's working now, and let us know if you're if you've done one case, multiple cases, uh, uh, if it's something that you're looking at doing. And here, here's what I would like you guys to do. Um, this will really help us focus in on what questions and what you're here for, really, honestly, because we'd like to make the best use of the time. So if you've done zero cases, just put none. If you've done a few cases, put few, please. And if you feel like you've done a lot of cases, put, you know, a lot. Okay. So that and and if there's any specific question, of course, uh, then ask that question because we're gonna. I, I, we want to tailor this to this group here, not just some. I can talk about a lot of things, honestly. Yeah. Um, but uh, let's talk about what really matters to you guys. Okay. So it's looking like we've got uh, some that have done some and some that are. Uh, haven't done any yet, and so we're kind of a little bit all over the board uh, with this. And so I would say so. Right now, no cases is, is winning the the, mm -hmm. the uh, votes there. So, um, okay, so let's just expand right on that. For those of you who have done no questions, okay, I see your questions now. So keep the questions coming because we want to tailor this. Yeah. So again, like I said. And we'll get to those. We'll get to those. Kind of just in review, we wanted to uh, share the screen here a little bit and kind of give, give us the format of what we're going to uh, cover here. Um, and so we've got a PowerPoint presentation to go through. And so that's basically it. So... So we're going to recap first um, the last webinar. I don't know how many of you were that are here today or at the last webinar. We had a nice little group or good sized group actually. Today it looks like we're having a larger group. Um, good. Thanks for that question there, Dr. Glatt. We'll we'll get right to you. Um, so you know, last webinar was about how to acquire the cases mainly, and uh, let's just so. So let's just jump down, Scott, a little bit here. And just the two takeaways from that. Oh, by the way, there's my staff. Hello, staff, my family. We're uh, coming to you from, next slide, please. The beautiful Temecula Valley wine country. It is a yeah. gorgeous day here in Southern California. Going to be 70 some degrees. We're, we're sorry if it's snowing wherever you're at. I, so. <laughs> we're going to pay for that, Scott. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, you know, and I put that slide up for another reason. You know, Scott and I talk a lot about uh, why we're doing this. And it's really to help you guys do more large cases, be more successful. Your success, you know, it's a cliche, really is our success. And part of that is if you're ever in Southern California, um, we definitely want you to stop by the lab Absolutely. and my office. I'll be happy to, you know, if you give me a little heads up, I'll be happy to sh uh, show you around, um, show you my office. And, you know, just, uh, it's fun to have people stop by. So feel free to email me and you'll get the email at the end. These pieces of the puzzle are kind of what we covered before and just the marketing, these are the important things that you, you know, you first know what, what you want to do uh, mm -hmm. as a marketing um, effort and what you want to focus on. You could focus in on doing more cleanings, uh, but why not focus on doing more larger cases, uh, the more profitable um, and get more, more satisfaction right. out of doing that type of work. And, and you, so- You guys are going to see this puzzle right here every single uh, webinar that we do because you can be all geared up to deliver large cases. Uh, it's called being all dressed up with no place to go if you don't have the cases. So we're, you know, Scott and I've talked years about doing this. It's not just good enough for us to show doctors how to do large cases. And some of you already know, I realize that, but, or maybe just share our, our best practices, but how to acquire those cases. That's a, um, not a very often shared, um, what's the word secret sauce. So that was the reason we started these webinars is really help you acquire the cases, which takes marketing, promotion and sales. So that's what we went through last time. And uh, next slide, please. Um, there were just two takeaways from that. For those of you who were not at that webinar, there's just two takeaways. And one is use your email promotion. And number, number two, do big cases, which leads right into our first point here on this slide, 
Um, can you uh, minimize that maybe? We're trying to move around here so we can see our own. There we go. Thanks. There you go, yeah. Doing larger, more large cases like the big boys. So tell us about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, so what Scott, you know, Scott and I have talked about this. Do more large cases like the big boys. The big boys are, you know, we all know who we're talking about, which is the largest implant um, uh, centers in America, yes? They're the ones that I'm kind of jumping down there. They're the ones that have the Super Bowl commercials. Right, things, so. okay. So they're a good model. Uh, I and, and we're still kind of in a marketing discussion here, and then we're going to jump right into the prosthetics of the whole thing. Um, I, in Temecula, am smack dab in the middle, like geocentric. I'm 42 miles north of one of the largest implant centers in America in, in San Diego. And I'm 41.8 miles south of the second largest one up in, or one of the largest ones up in uh, Riverside. Reason I know about this, uh, these, uh, this implant center network that we all, that has a Super Bowl commercials mm -hmm. is that my oral surgeon that is one of my contracted oral surgeons is one of, is one of their major uh, surgeons. So I have researched and gotten from him exactly how they do everything. I also have some other contacts uh, that have briefed me. And so, you know, when you're looking to be successful at something particularly as big as full arch zircon, you want to research exactly what the people are doing that have gone before you for the last 15 years. They started about 15 years ago. By the way, this company came out of Nobel BioCare uh, hot shots themselves. And the interesting and fascinating thing, lesson for us, the first lesson I learned is, you would think that these large implant centers, and there are others that are not part of this network. There's some big ones in Scottsdale, Arizona. There's a big one back in Western New York. Uh, New York City itself, of course, has. Florida has some of the larger ones. These are offices that are doing like, you know, five to $10 million a year in almost exclusively full arch zircon. And, and you were saying that the two offices near, near you are you know, doing a million dollars a month, approximately, right? I happen to know that they're doing over a million dollars a month. Uh, so that takes some real know-how. I respect the heck out of these guys. I mean, they, I don't view anyone as competition. I'm, uh, we have a $4 billion a year uh, market in this country for this. Mm -hmm. they're, the one company alone is doing, the big one with the Super Bowl commercials, they're doing about a billion a year. Uh, so, so, so you're saying there's a lot of these cases out there that a, can be done there's and, and a lot, are being done. There's a lot to, sh to be shared. Yeah, yeah so. I only want 10% of their... Yeah, that's all. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so anyway, um, we need to follow their example. And that's an that's exciting thing for us as a laboratory that, that we, we, we want to do more of these large cases. Dr. Cutts is helping us um, work through all the, uh, the pitfalls of some of the technical issues so we can streamline our processes and and uh, he's here to help uh, you all today to be able to do the same thing. So, so pretty exciting. So I'm glad Excellent. you guys are tuning in. So I just, so we're, we're gonna jump right now into the perils of prosthetics. So what I mean by that is that, and for, uh, there's one doctor that said he's done, is doing a lot of these cases. You've already learned this uh, doctor, and that is, uh, and for those of you who have not done a lot of these cases, here's the big, um, uh, here's the learning curve on the other side of the learning curve. And that is that prosthetics is where the, where the game is, not the surgical part. Now, I'm surgically oriented myself. I in, uh, taught oral surgery at Loma Linda and I got the award in my class, blah, 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 and all that. So I've always considered myself a surgical uh, doctor. Uh, the problem is if you're going to deliver full arch zircon cases, and by the way, one of the questions was, what's the difference between hybrid and zircon? I'll get right to that. If you're going to do full arch prosthesis, let's put it that way, um, you're going to have to become a very, very good prosthodontist. I hate to tell you, it's really bad news. When I was in school, we would look at the denture department and, and kind of like just poo-poo them. They were the poor, poor cousins, poor sisters. Who wants to do dentures? Little, this is my experience. You're going to have to be very, very, very good at dentures. And we're going to, and we're going to have some webinars and some short uh, videos just on that alone. Because to get to a full arch prosthesis, you've got to have a beautifully done denture to start with. Uh, I'd be interested to have, hear from the doctor who's done a lot of these cases, some feedback on that. I'd, I'd almost like to unmute uh, yeah. and, and hear some 
uh, back and forth live communication with, with that doctor or anyone else to see if you have learned what I've learned, which is prosthetics is where the hard work is. Sure, surgery is challenging, it's stressful, but the long play on this it takes four to six months to deliver a prosthetic case. The surgeons, let's use the, the Super Bowl commercial producing implant centers. They contract in, they charge $30,000 per case. So that's what we're, that's what you're talking about bringing into your practice when you do a case like this. 30, yeah, it's, it's roughly 30,000 a case. And for every 10 p, uh, uh, patients that come in for a Zircon commercial, nine out of 10 are not gonna be Zircon candidates. They're asking the question, is it time for me or whatever? Three out of 10 in my practice end up being uh, locator denture cases. Sure, that's an implant case, but the prosthesis is a removable mm -hmm. rather than a fixed. One out of 10 actually become uh, a zircon case. I had a question for you with, uh, you know, what if, if you have, uh, you obviously place your own implants <laughs> and things. Uh, if you have a, a, a clinician that doesn't place their own implants, um, what, what's an avenue where they could do more of these types of cases, even though they're not doing the implants themselves? So at the end of the seminar today, we'll go into some solutions for you. But for if you either way, let's say you are are not comfortable, you haven't placed a lot of implants. Obviously, you're going to make more money if you're placing the implants yourself and things. So and so you probably encourage them if they have the inclination to do that, to do that. But, if, uh, if you do, yes. And we're going to offer that service where you can send in your x-rays to Scott and to me, and we'll help you treat and plan the case because we want to see you doing more of those cases. But let's say you're not comfortable doing implants uh, and you're not close enough for us to come over and, you know, talk you through the first case, then you hire in an oral surgeon. Do, I, you know, feel free to refer these cases out as you have in the past if you want. But I think if you're here on this webinar, you're looking at doing the cases, you should be doing the cases. You do the hard labor of acquiring the, the, the patients. new patients and so forth. You should be doing the cases. So you hire an oral surgeon in. So let's look at what the, let, let's just jump right to the bottom line and then we'll get to some more prosthetics. If you are charging anywhere near $30,000 for the case, and that does not include the anesthesia, does not include the, uh, bone graft, any sinus lifts or extensive bone grafting. Uh, I don't count putting some allograft around an implant just so it fills in the gap space. I mean, I do that for no charge, frankly. But if you're going to do extensive bone grafting, you have to charge for that. Your oral surgeon is going to charge you for that. You bring an oral surgeon to do an arch, what the big boys are paying, their oral surgeons per arch is around $4,000. Of course, they're doing three arches in the morning. So the surgeons are showing up at 6.30 in the morning. The first case is already prepped and ready to go. They're done with that case in an hour and 15 minutes, moved on to the next one, and the, and the prosthodontists and lab techs are moving in on the conversion, if that's what they're doing, and they usually are. And I'll go into what a conversion is in a moment. So in, in your experience, uh, you know, what are some of the things that go wrong in these types of cases from the get-go? I, I spoke with some of the clinicians that were signing up today and maybe they'd done one case, but they didn't have a good experience. And, <laughs> and they were looking at maybe not going back and doing another one just because of their past experience. And you've probably been through that. I had, had one or two cases that probably didn't go up. You know, no, they've all been so, perfect, Scott. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, for the doctor that has done a lot of questions, you know, things things can go wrong. You can have an implant that's spinning. It doesn't have enough torque, enough strength, immediate load. Then you have to you have to change on the fly. Maybe you don't convert. You just put the denture over. Um, prosthetically, since this is mainly about prosthetics, I mean, we'll have another webinar on surgical uh, procedure and what can go wrong and all that. But prosthetically, more things can go wrong than in surgery for me, for me. And part of that is confusion on what's what. Let me answer that question on what a hybrid is uh, versus a cementable and uh, a full arch zircon. Okay, so a hybrid is a combination. It's basically a denture that's been converted into a fixed bridge. How do they do that? Uh, I even had a misunderstanding myself 10 years ago that a hybrid was just all acrylic with titanium cylinders in it. Uh, that's not a hybrid. A hybrid is titanium cylinders uh, on the implants with a framework that's milled out of titanium. So you have a quite a substantial metal framework within your acrylic and your denture teeth. So that's what a hybrid is. So it, it's not just a denture that's been converted uh, with some titanium cylinders. 
uh, coming off of the implants. Um, and, and, there, and there's some disadvantages to the hybrids. I, I know from the mm -hmm. labs, lab's perspective, we try to steer people to zirconia because the zirconia is more longer lasting. Uh, the acrylic will break off of a hybrid, off of the metal framework here, here's combining a, two unlike materials. And so uh, it's a huge problem in delamination is what they call it. So for uh, you doctors that have done a lot of these cases, and if you've done hybrids, you learned the painful lesson that the big shots have learned. Um, there are two, there is another large private practice in uh, the LA, Southern California area that, from, that is, is the biggest advertiser on AM radio and so forth. And they, I, I happen to know uh, one of their lab techs and they were doing hybrids for years. The big Super Bowl network guys, they have gone away from hybrid. They used to do hybrids. Everyone used to do hybrids. Zircon has only been around 10 to 12 years. So um, you notice that Glidewell will not do uh, hybrids anymore, I think. Was that right? Uh, I don't know. I don't use them anymore. I know you use this. But, uh... <laughs> so <laughs> I'm kidding. Glidewell's actually, they have their place. So the bottom line is that hybrid delaminates, the denture teeth pop out, they wear like crazy. I've had a number of, uh, quite a few cases come to me. Unfortunately, some of them done overseas where the patient's saying, what can you do for me? And I'm like, mm -hmm. you have to take that frame. What you have to do, by the way, doctors, you take the framework off, send it, take a pickup and pressure, send it to the laboratory. They put analogs on it. You're redoing the case, period. That's, yeah. that's what it is. Do you offer a lot of hybrids in your office? Is it mostly... Uh, um, uh, uh, I've heard you call them snap-ons. So I only, I don't so, offer hybrid anymore at all. No, okay. okay. Uh, so because of the fact that I know that it's going to, they're going to break and wear out. Uh, once in a while, I, I, I should, I, I'm going to correct myself. I'll use a hybrid if uh, a person, actually, I've never had to do this. I've heard of people where you have upper and lower zircon and the patient doesn't like the clacking, mm -hmm. which I don't know if it, I've never had anyone complain about the clacking, but then in that case, you either have to do actually, believe it or not, on prep your zircon and do onlays that are in composite or 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 whatever, um, so that the occlusal surface is not all zircon, mm -hmm. or you make a hybrid opposing the zir zircon. I don't know how that would work. I've heard of people doing that because mm -hmm. the zircon is going to beat the daily. It's rock paper scissors. It's going to beat up the hybrid. So I don't really think there's any. I don't think there's a place for hybrid at this point. Honestly. Yeah. So you mainly do the, the snap-on type of a denture mm -hmm. uh, with locator or something like that. Okay. Um, you also do a, a, a. We do we do this for you. These temporaries. Actually, we call them prototypes. <laughs> Uh, more of a prototype where they're in the in the in the carryover stages to getting a full zirconia and then you do a full zirconia is that right correct just kind of basically those three things yeah so um now with those with those three materials um you know your first couple cases in doing those what do you think are key to making those successful you know when you're i guess first is determining that what the patient needs and then the second step would be um you know setting it up in wax and and uh um so do you want to go through the protocol now? Is that um, we could, or or uh, you told me something fairly recently about um, you, you want you want to make sure that you go to a prototype, but uh, you also there's a key factor in getting the patient to buy into the the, the, the prosthetic, and so uh, so you do a temporary, and so that's one of the pitfalls, really. Yeah. And what we're talking about is is that you it, it, that you pull the trigger too soon and you go to full zirconia, and yeah. then they don't like the prosthetic. So, so let's so, clarify some terms here. Because okay. because we're we're throwing some terms around here, and one of the things I've discovered, and I've talked to many laboratories and technicians, and and surveyed them and doctors, is there's so much different terminology flying around that there's a there's some confusion going, and it creates. May, uh, someone asked, what are some of the pitfalls in doing the prosthetics or doing these cases? The biggest pitfall, I think, is, is well, I don't know if it's the biggest one, but one of the biggest is being confused about what the process, but what's available and what are we using? What are the part names? Uh, so just to clarify a few things, uh, a, a hybrid, a true hybrid has a full titanium component to it. It's not just the little cylinders right at each implant site. Uh, a, there, there's a, we're gonna use a term called a prototype. The prototype is the final plastic acrylic denture teeth version of 
of what eventually is going to become the zircon. So it's not a hybrid, you notice. It looks like a hybrid, that's the problem because it's acrylic. It looks the same, exact same. I have some examples in my hands here that I'm gonna show you in a moment. But uh, the prototype is, is basically the final product in plastic that can be scanned and then milled uh, on, a, on the zircon uh, milling machines and then uh, processed out from there. But the bottom line is what we're trying to distinguish is that you're going to be putting in, uh, you're going to be creating a perfect version of the zircon in plastic. We call that the prototype. What, what do you think some of the difficulties are in getting patients to accept that? Um, I mean, you, you guys go to great lengths in, in getting that set up. Uh, you, know, you do your wax trying, multiple resets, um, you know, indicating to the laboratory, you know, where the midline is, all those types of things, um, you know, the smile line indicating all those things, getting everything set up in wax first, I guess. Well, okay, so let's go to the, um, the protocol. So we've worked out, Scott and I have uh, laid out what the workflow is on this. And I think that'll answer a lot of those okay. questions right there. And there we go, we've got the, the, the okay. protocol there. So um, did I answer that question, Dr. Glatt, uh, as far as Materials. what a zircon is versus hybrid versus, cement? I didn't really talk about cementable units. Um, did, did I answer that question for Dr. Glatt? Let me know. Uh, I can see one question I didn't answer. Okay, so actually I'm gonna ask everyone out there to make your best guess, half of it, <laughs> okay. So here's, I'm gonna ask this question. What is, why was a zircon, full arch zircon, why was the zircon invented? Why not just put crown and bridge over custom abutments? Or just, in other words, just regular, uh, PFMs or, or, or regular crowns, why not just do regular crowns? That's one of your questions, Dr. Klatt. So I'm gonna pose that question back out. The answer is unbelievably simple. And until you've done them and thought about it a little bit, it's, it might not be apparent. Okay, so let's pose the question again. Why did, you know, why are we not just, why did, why did zircon uh, bridges even come into existence? Why did multi-units come into existence? Why aren't we just taking four or five implants, putting abutments on them, and sliding on a full arch uh, PFM bridge? I, I don't know the answer to that, but uh, could, you it don't? Be, could it could be a cost, cost <laughs> issue? No. No? Okay. Uh, I should know. I think that, well, I think that is part of it, but, mm -hmm. but the real reason for us clinicians, let's see if anyone's guessing, I'm looking for the answers here, guys and girls. So Dr. Glad's asking, what about full zirconia versus zirconia substructure with cementable zirconia crowns? So we're looking at that. Are you? We are, yeah. I, I don't know the answer to that. So uh, I, I, I know from the lab standpoint, the reason that we're looking at that is to perhaps improve cosmetics, you know, uh, to have uh, something that's not solid zirconia. Uh, we feel like we can do more layering, add, add more bells and whistles, make it look more natural. Uh, but, but to be quite frank with you, the, uh, uh, the patients that I've heard about, they're quite happy with the, with the full zirconia, many of them, because uh, you know, they're indentulous already. And so, uh, so to have something that's permanent in there. I'm not sure what the question is, Dr. Glatt. What about full zircon, zircon or zirconia versus zirconia substructure with cementable zircon crowns? Is that on implants you're talking about? Uh, if so, um, I think so. I think that would be on implants. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, so the last case I did was the zirconia substructure and I had, I had, um, 15, uh, six, uh, 14 crowns that I just cemented on top of that substructure. Uh, you know, it's it a nice way to go. I, I, why did I do it? You know, just to try something different. Um, <laughs> what was the know, substructure resting on? What's that? What was the substructure resting on? Well, the substructure had uh, abutments in it and that just, that screwed right onto the, the, the implants. Okay, so so basically, no, I had a prototype of that that I tried in uh, to make sure that the substructure was passive uh, and it fit perfectly, and then sent that back. That was milled, and then um, they returned that back with the substructure 
um, with ideal color and basically preps. And then I just cemented each with a resin modified glass ionomer and that was that. So can I, guess, like was, so can, can I guess that the advantage of that or why you would do that is that you wanna get the framework, so to speak, if I can use an old term for in place of substructure, fully in place, seated, you know that's good. Now when you take your impression for the crowns, you're, you're just worrying about the, the aesthetics and the fit of the crowns, but you're just trying to get your, you're splitting the, a, a full arch zircon as all of that at once, correct? Right, but I didn't take another impression. It was all just made all at once. So they scanned it and made it all at once. Yeah, well, okay. one, of the, one of the advantages of that is if something broke, mm -hmm. uh, I was only dealing with one unit and I can, you know, either, you know, I can provisionalize it and have another unit made in the lab because it was already scanned. Yeah, that's nice. I, I agree, that would be a nice advantage. That's, a, that's another, um, another way to do it. I'd have to look at it and, and try it. Like you said, I might try that out and see, you know, if it, it provides advantages of, maybe you want your posteriors a little different design uh, and you wanna have, I would think, the big advantage to me is that I could make the anteriors uh, porcelain layered over zirconia to get better aesthetics. That would be the big advantage to me, I think. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. let me know. What, if you look into it, let me know. And if Scott has more of these, then we can have that discussion. Yeah, I think, the, I think the aesthetics would be the big advantage to me. And I also like what you said, Dr. Glad, about, you know, if something breaks, then, you know, you have a chance to, you know, keep the whole thing and just repair one part of it. So good, good question. Okay, so um, let's just jump forward then. And any other questions, please go ahead. I'm gonna answer that question now on, you know, why Zircon versus just regular Crown and Bridge. So you have to actually do these cases to see it. it took me a while to, to see what I was looking at, but when you're, if you, if you look at a Zircon, it is, the gum, to, it's replacing the soft tissue. I don't think they saw that. So. Uh, that's fine, yeah. So if you look at that zircon right there, it's replacing, replacing soft tissue, you know, and, and also heart tissue, bone underneath it that has been lost. So when you have some, we've all had those cases where we use conventional crown and bridge, whether it be on teeth or on implants, and the teeth end up being, you know, 16 millimeters long, or we ask the laboratory to put a skirt on there so that's what a zircon is designed to do to replace soft, severe bone loss. I don't want to severe, you can't even do the case, but moderate to pretty beefy bone loss and tissue issues uh, replacing at the same time. You can't do that with conventional crown or bridge very easily. Okay, let's go through the protocol um, that the big boys use and that I've adopted. And by the way, just as an aside, while well, Scott's clicking over on that, I just purchased the exact implant system that the big boys use. And they've done a lot of research and they finally settled on one system. And guess what the key point, um, anyone wanna hazard a guess on what the key point of that implant, implant system is? It's called Neodent, by the way. I don't know if you ever heard of Neodent. They're a, a division of Strauman. Strauman bought them about Mm, I would guess five to seven years ago, and uh, they're they're out of Brazil. And, and this is what what the big boys are using. Yes, this neodent. This is the system the big boys are using, and a fascinating reason they're using it. Again, I'm going to give someone. We need to start handing out prizes. Well, we're going to hand questions. out. I have a cutting board from Vermont that I just brought back with me for the first person to guess why they use this particular implant. So it's the number one reason they use it. 20 seconds. Anyone gonna guess, you think? I, don't think I would never have guess. guessed myself. Okay, so amazingly enough, the answer, no one's, well, someone's gotta show the good. There is a guess. Uh, Stability. Let's see if that applies here. I, I'm gonna be like, you know. I'm gonna guess. Jeopardy, you're gonna guess? I want oh, a you... cutting board. <laughs> Just, uh, <laughs> maybe. Um, he knows uh, the answer, that's why. <laughs> Uh, uh, what would you call that? What's what's a good word for that? Uniformity. 
uniformity is simplicity a, a, simplicity and uniformity you, with these cases i know from the lab standpoint we want to make them as simple as possible and uh, in the lab side you know it's 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 all about having the parts you know if, if, a, if a surgeon uses multiple implant platforms obviously it's going to get more complicated right and so uh, it's more prone to be, being able be, for us to be able to make mistakes so so neodent enters in, in the picture, I think, with that. So the answer, uh, Dustin, and for everyone else, and by the way, thank you for guessing. You get a cutting board just for guessing. <laughs> I think we should do that. I mean, I pre appreciate, you know, when we're over here, it's good to get feedback, let's put it that way. Um, the answer is the platforms, no matter the implant diameter, are all the same. I'll say that again. No matter the implant di dynam uh, diameter, and that's, they extend from 3.75 up to about 4.8. That's neodent. They're all 3.5 millimeter platforms. Why is that so huge? Why did the big Why did the big boys take all their hundreds of millions of dollars of research and go? That's the company down there in Brazil. It's It's because this this leads to really that other question of prosthetics. Why it's such a headache? Why it's it it is the main block towards production of big cases is prosthetics. Why? A lot of complexity of parts. Uh, let's take a multi-unit abutment. Multi-unit abutment is designed for two purposes, is, is there for two reasons. To allow you to correct angulations and height differences between areas. And you don't have to go down deep through tissue and, and it, just, it just simplifies everything. Well, the problem is if you're using different uh, implants that have different platforms for every diameter, which most systems do, or at least for every two diameters, you literally have to keep in stock or order and carefully look at the SKU number. And doctors, if you've ever, doctors that are doing this, either you have to have a top assistant who understands all the terminology and all the clinical aspects and prosthetic aspects, or you have to do it yourself or else you're gonna get wrong parts. And uh, Scott, I mean, you from the laboratory side of it, you know what it's like to have to it's order very, parts. It's very complicated. It can be very it's complicated. It's extremely, it, yeah. And, and it's all, and I was speaking with uh, the, uh, the chief gentleman that orders our parts. It's only going to get more complicated as things go, too. And so, but Neodent's a great find if you can simplify. So it's it really says something that a company that's doing a billion dollars a year in this country in implants chooses Neodent. Main. By the way, it's a nice implant too. I, I love, there's some really nifty self-tapping, uh, sending the bone up the, up the sides in a sluice way thing. Uh, crestal bone stresses, I think they've addressed that issue so you don't have as much bone loss. I, I just started using it so I can't swear on that one. But boy, the simplicity and the ease of use. Your My parts uh, uh, cabinet is one third the size. And when I order something, it's just easy. Send me That's a big blah, you know. So there's a little tip for you right there from the big boys. Okay, back to the protocol. And this is gonna, I think, answer uh, a lot of the questions that you, you all might have out there if you're doing these cases. And I wanna just throw in a quick comment here. Please make a little star by this if you're making any notes. You know, any of us can do something one time given enough time. So in other words, you can have one zircon case come in every two months and labor over that and, and, and spend a lot of time and so forth and so on and back and forth on it. And the patient waits a little bit. When you're doing a zircon case, anything over a zircon case a week, and you've got to get a system going on like yeah. these guys. These guys are doing three and four a day. Look at the numbers, that's $100,000 a day minimally. So, and if, and if a practice could do one or two a month, um, you could have this kind of a system set up. If you do one or two a month, you need this kind of system uh, mm -hmm. because it'll eventually, you, they pile up on you. You've got 10 going at a time and you're ordering, up, oh, what, what stage are we at? Well, here we are right here. Mm -hmm. Let's just look at the eight step protocol. I don't know why I put four there. I think we were thinking we were going we to We were dreaming so. that we could jam this into four steps. Um, okay, so some terminology again, right off the bat, your implants are in place, they've been there either, if this is an immediate load, that's another issue, which I'll go into, which is which is its own thing. And we'll, we're gonna do a webinar just on immediate load and conversions. 
Um, and I'll come back to that a little bit though right here. So you have your implants in place. What is the next step? Well, obviously you're gonna take an impression with impression post. Sure. No, they can't see this. Unless you you can hold it up. I can. The full screen. Yeah. It doesn't really show anything anyway, honestly, but so. Give it a try. Will that show? No, it doesn't. No, it's it the doesn't other do one it. that shows it. Oh. I have some of my, mom, my models here. Let's go back to the, the thing there and ask you sure. that show. So you're going to take a platform level impression. What does platform mean? Platform means the top of the implant, where the abutment fits into, where the screw goes into. It's the implant itself. So the terminology, y'all, out there is platform level impression. Uh, there's another term that's used, maybe East Coast. You know how East Coast um, dental schools teach different, they have different terms. used to be PFMs and PBCs. PFM mm -hmm. was West Coast, PBC, East Coast, I think. Well, uh, equivalent to that might be fixture level impression. So fixture level means fixture, meaning the implant itself. Platform, meaning the implant itself, the actual well going down in the implant. So you take that impression with the impression post, and you send that into the laboratory. And, and this is foundational because it's a key first step to getting that model done properly. Correct. So, I mean, every single step, if it's not done perfectly, mm -hmm. and as some of your questions were, what are some of the problems you run into? Oh, here you go. So <clears throat> what, can, what can occur wrong on a platform level impression? Number one is your, your impression post rotates. Some little rotate, rotation or pull out or whatever and you're screwed and it's, it's, it's a real problem. Now you can catch that at the next appointment, which is why you do the next step. And some people skip this to the, uh, with a lot of heartache uh, resulting. So IVJ or VJ, again, the big boys use the term VJ. It means verification. So what is a jig? A jig is like a setup of things that are all hooked together and all uh, lattice worked together. So held in place. That's what a jig does. It holds in place, whether it's a jigsaw or a jig puzzle, which is made from a jigsaw. A jig it means to hold something in place while you machine it. That's and, the jig. And from, and from the lab standpoint, we're going to pour this model. Uh, we're going to make this jig. We're going to send a, uh, a custom tray along uh, when we return it to you so that you can try it in and, and basically make a new, we'll, we'll be making a new model. So here's where your pay. This is funny. This is where your patients go. What? And you have to really educate them. You just took put and usually they're not awake anyway, so they don't have a chance to say this, but you put in four to five impression posts, you tighten the internal screw, you take a custom tray or you cut a hole in a stock tray. You don't really need a, uh, a custom tray for that platform level impression. And you put some, you put your impression material, you squirt around each post, you put it down over. This is a open tray uh, technique that I'm describing. That's what I prefer. You, you wipe the impression material off the top of each impression post and you unscrew the screw. You wait to hear the click, 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 click four or five times to make sure you've all done that. Doctors where you thought you had it loose, you rip it out and one of them is still there. That can happen with the screw loose uh, out of there also because it's just so closely approximated into the well of the implant that it won't come out in the impression, especially with PVS, which is why I use, I know the young generation here are going to give me some whatever for this. I use Impergum when I do uh, implant post impressions. I want something that's rigid and is going to grab a hold of those things, not PVS to me, it allows too much uh, room for rotation and just releasing out right, it'll slide right through it. Okay, so the laboratory then takes that mold, that impression, I have one here, but I don't want to switch screens. And they turn, they take the exact same post that you just sent in, they put them back on, they put the analog in, obviously, pour it up, turn it up. Now they have the, an a, a model of, with the analogs in an exact representation of what's in the patient's mouth. Take the same post, they put them in and put little acrylic wings on them, send them back to you with a custom tray and say, retake the impression. Now that it's a, with a verification jig. What do they mean by jig? Something that can be connected all together in one piece. All those posts are now get that connected by bonding material or, or acrylic. If you want to take the time to use cold cure acrylic. Yeah, in, in a pickup impression. In a pickup impression. Yeah. So you do the same exact thing. You put the impression material around, you put the tray over. If the patient's awake, their question is, and I've gotten this, is like, didn't we just do this? Um, and you have to, you don't want to have to explain the fact that 
a impression post can lean one degree and that just will mess up everything. So you try to explain the best you can, but the point is it looks the exact same to the patient. You're using the exact same uh, tray sometimes, the exact same post, the whole thing. So anyway, off of that, you now have a super precise uh, impression of, uh, and I'm kind of skipping the multi-level part of this, mm -hmm. of the uh, implant fixtures. Did you want to say something? Uh, just say that it's foundational as a laboratory. We don't, uh, as, as you don't, and as your patient don't, doesn't want to have happen, we don't want to go to the very end of the process and have something not fit. And so very, very this is a very important step uh, before we proceed. Yeah, I, so, want, I wonder if some- and It's interesting to hear your side of it and, and all the, you know, the I mean, patient side, the yeah. patient side, what they're saying and, and things like that, because it uh, makes a lot of sense. And it's a hassle, especially if you have to have patients that are sedated, that are high fear, you have to sedate them for that appointment. It is a bit of a hassle. I have heard of, of doctors and laboratories even skipping this procedure and just taking your platform level. Wow, that's dicey. Yeah. Uh, in a laboratory you know, like ourselves, we might do that once, but, and, and, but you know, we're not going to do it again. Yeah, so, once you, yeah, once you, you have a can't cut steps, thirty thousand dollar prosthesis sent back to you, and the patient's not happy, you don't do that again. Um, yeah, hey, good comment, Doctor Glatt. Scanning, yeah, that that handles all the rotation problems, and uh, I, you know, I that, I think that's coming in my my young associates that I'm training and. In my uh, in my offices on all this, I have a feeling they'll probably be scanning. I'm an old school guy, and uh, I do it that way. But yeah, totally. And that's where it, I'm not really big into digital scanning and all that, honestly, because I am old school. I just uh, I'm doing you know I do things the way I've done them for many years. But I can see that that's the future. Then you don't have to worry about yeah. any of that. Okay, so uh, the next so the laboratory then takes the VJIG re pours up makes the true master model and on that of course they put in some te some some temporary cylinders and they build you your bite registration your base plate essentially with wax on it wax try in and from that step can i interject yeah, we really need for you to mark the uh, uh, help us out uh, mark the midline fill in uh, the area so that it, 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 it in function it'll feel like their denture when they put it in their their lips will be supported uh, you'll mark the lip line on that wax rim. You'll cut the wax rim to length. You'll end up with a perfect, um, I want to say jig, but a perfect representation of what their denture is going to be. So a template to yeah. work off of. And, and that's just key. Um, go ahead, Dr. Chris. Well, you know, I want to, I wasn't going to tell this story, but I'll see if I can say a long story in 30 seconds. I, for, you know, again, I'm not a prosthetic guy. Uh, dentures, you know, I was in uh, oral surgery my whole senior year, never even peeked out of there, did, you know, whole basically a mini re in residency before I graduated and then taught afterwards. And it took a conversation with the, pro he's arguably considered the master of all of this on the West Coast, as far as laboratory technicians, where I sat down and talked with him for about two and a half hours straight about prosthetics and it had been years and I was like you know I, I heard all these terms flying by me of get this you know the speaking space and the, uh, the the phonetics sounds the f's the s's and all that and suddenly for some reason in that conversation 30 years into my practicing of dentistry I got prosthetics and so you know what would be fun would be to reenact that with models in fact, I, we will do this because the, the, I now have a full appreciation for the precision and the art and science of designing someone's smile, designing a denture essentially that is perfect for them uh, from lip line to overbite to, to the aesthetics to the, the teeth set over the ridge so you don't have a cantilever effect. Everything that we kind of skimmed over in dental school practice a little bit because how many of us really specialize in dentures that are not prosthodontists, by the way. So you're going to, here's what I'm trying to say. Somehow all of us who are doing this, Dr. Glatt, I'd be interested to hear what you say on this. Sarah, I'd like to hear what your, your feedback on this is. We, we had to get really good at pros, prosthodontics, even though it wasn't our thing originally. You know, we, we, you think it's implantology that we're practicing here. <laughs> it it's isn't. Gross. Look at the big shots, the big shots, and I didn't mention, here's their business model. 
Each one of their offices is owned externally by an entrepreneur dentist or non-dentist. It's not, they're not even on site. They own usually two or three or four of them, just like a McDonald's. These are hotshot, big player doctors that are entrepreneurs more than they are. They don't even practice dentistry at this point. Who runs one of those implant centers? The oral, oral surgeons are hired guns. They come in and out for $4,000 a whack. Uh, they have their own in-house laboratory and the prosthodontist is king. That's who the chief doctor is in these implant centers. Uh, this all came out of Nobel BioCare's research facility back when they invented all in four back in the early 2000s. Interesting history on this, but the point, the lesson for us doctors um, is that prosthodontics is king. The surgery is, 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 is number two. Yeah. Uh, you can hire someone to do the surgery, you can do it yourself, but the prosthodontics is where it's happening. And that's why here we are talking about prosthodontics. So, so, after, so after we get that bite representation from the, uh, from the office, uh, the wax, uh, wax rim is then fabricated by the laboratory, correct? And ho hopefully we've gotten all of our information from the office. Uh, you've s selected a mold for us, perhaps. There's been some consultation on the, on the teeth and, and things like that with the patient. Uh, At that point, it's just like making a denture. Yeah, okay. At that point, you're, you're, you're just making a denture. If you have a pre-op of an existing denture that they had before that they liked, you know, send that along uh, for the laboratory. Give us the information, and then we can then we can take this along the next step, which is to make a prototype. If if right? you, if yes, if you're going to do a lot of these, he, here's a real, you know, Doctor Glad. I'm waiting for your comment on the. What was, I asked him a question. What was that? Okay. Um, about the prosthodontics. If he if he's experienced that. Um, here's, if you're going to do a lot of these, and I hope, I hope, we hope that a lot of you doctors, um, and it'll be just, it frankly, it'll be a few of these, uh, you know, some of you will do one or two of these per year. Some of you will do none. Some of you will catch fire and go, you know what? I want to have an in, my own implant cross center. I live in an urban area where there's at least enough population. I mean, honestly, if you live in North Dakota, you're probably going to do, I don't know, maybe North Dakota has more people than I think I don't. But if you, if you don't live in a high enough population area to, you know, have enough people who want this, this product and service, then you're not going to be able to do that many. But if you live in an area where there, we have a lot of people over the age of 50 that are retired reasonably well off, you're going to be doing, you, you have an uh, opportunity to do a lot of these cases. And if you do a lot of these cases, um, you're going to run into, if you do a lot truly, you're going to run into this point. And Scott's, I'm going to surprise Scott on something because he's going to go, hey, wait a minute. I thought we're here to promote ProCraft. Well, we are, but watch this. You actually need your own in-house in laboratory if you're big. If you're doing two to three or four cases of this of these a week, you need, you need your own in-house laboratory. Well, wait a minute. Aren't I you know, saying you don't need ProCraft. Well, here's the problem. Well, well, and if you don't have that laboratory, you're going to have to do it yourself, right? Yeah, and even if and you do, I do that. Many, so we're doing that many cases. I just opened my new office, and I'm still going to need ProCraft. Why? Even if I have my lab tech here, which I do one day a week. Well, here's we're a perfect example of this. Mm -hmm. I, I need ProCraft more than ever because all my lab tech has time to do is do conversions at the chair, and and, and that's con basically converting a um, uh, an acrylic prosthesis, right? Yes. To making it a screw retained prosthesis. Okay. So, so, so Procraft makes the denture for you, uh, often, or, or processes it, processes the processes the acrylic, and uh, and, and, <laughs> and 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 then. Yeah, I'm going to turn. They do the conversion. Don't worry. This is going to come back to Procraft. You're going to okay, okay. you'll, you'll be happy with this. I have actually learned this myself. I have, you know. I have a lab tech who I personally train and who works for the big boys. I'm just going to say it finally now. That's why I know what's going on. And he works for me one to two days a week over in the desert in Palm Springs area and here. And even with him, we realize, we, have you seen any lessening of flow of cases? No, no. no we use ProCraft very busy. more. So what do you need a lab tech for? Conversions at the chair 
and for modifications to the wax up. To the wax up. Uh, now, what I have found with Procraft is if we work out our communications, and this is why I think Procraft, I have used the big laboratory. There's no way you can communicate with a lab tech at that laboratory. So you have to send the case in. I would average two to three times back and forth, and the patients are not going to go for that. When, when you ramp the numbers up, you're going to have too many unhappy patients. So one of the a huge point we're trying to communicate here, I mean, Scott and I have talked about this many mm -hmm. times. We want to show you guys how to do these large cases, even do a lot of them, and not have to have your own lab tech and not go back and forth. Because if you go back and forth, your patient's going to be unhappy. It's just flat out. You got to deliver it and maybe one or two try-ins at most. And even then it's stretching out. So, so that's why it's important that in the office, and I'm sure you could do this, even though you have uh, Keith that comes in, you modify the wax up, you get it just dialed in perfectly to where the patient's really going to love it. You got to be able to move teeth, I guess. You got to be able to move. It teeth. is painfully, you just said it, Scott. Mm -hmm. By the way, Dr. Uh, Glatt, um, I get where you're coming from. You and I are in the same boat. Uh, I've done lots of full mouth reconstruction, fixed full mouth reconstruction. We're very, we know, but you know, moving teeth, like Scott just said in wax, I'm not interested in doing that, but guess what? I've had to, um, step back a little bit and get good or at least proficient at doing that. So, um, yeah, that's a big subject. It's another whole webinar. We're going to go into exactly what you have to know prosthetically mm -hmm. to be able to deliver these cases Sur surgically. Uh, Dr. Glatt, do you place your own implants? I have a question for you. Let me know. It uh, doesn't matter. I, it's, uh, I'm going to, I place my own implants at this point, but uh, increasingly I hire out to uh, my hotshot guy from USC that just graduated from implant perio there or whatever. I don't have time to even do all, all the cases. Okay, good. So um, now we get to the really... So the wax, wax try-in is approved and the patient loves it and, uh, and they've had this try-in. Here's the tricky part. Okay, step five here. You deliver the prototype and you adjust it. Some doctors and laboratories say, good, send it back to us right there and give the patient whatever they're wearing as a temporary denture or whatever it was, or a converted, a conversion. Uh, so I almost should define a conversion uh, denture right now, and, but I'm gonna resist the temptation. I'll come back to that, just a conversion denture. We'll come back to what that is. Uh, but you should, to me, my experience is you have the patient wear that hybrid. It's, it has no titan, titanium substructure. It's weak. It's a bit risky. You don't want to go more longer than two to four weeks, but you wear, uh, you have them wear that. Why? They've got to approve it. They, they, you just can't put it in their mouth and go, well, do you like that or not? You know how that is, right? Because then they're going to come back. So you want them to test drive it. You want them to test drive it. Chew on some things. So make sure the bite is right, that they weren't just protruding when you, you know, all that sort of thing. So they wear the prototypes. And again, the prototype is exactly what the zircon is going to be. And this is where the laboratory comes in. And I've worked very closely with uh, Procraft so that what you get back is an exact representation of what you sent them. And that's harder than, easier said than done. Let's put it that way. Not all laboratories can do that. And these guys have developed uh, a, you know, develop the technique up to the point where they can actually do that. I wish I could hold this up and show it to them. Yeah. I didn't have time to put a couple of my uh, pictures in their favorite cases. cases in there. So here is. So we got the patient wearing the prototype for two to two to four weeks. They like it. They come back. They give you the go ahead. Say, let's go. Or you change whatever you need to change in adjust. acrylic, which isn't is a you know usually pretty simple adjust. Or maybe they want their a d different shade of tooth or whatever. If it's, by the way, little tip here, patient comes back with a hybrid, excuse me, the prototype two to four weeks later, and they say, I love it, but I wanted a little lighter teeth. Fine, you don't need to do anything because they're gonna handle that at the laboratory, mm -hmm. the shade. The shade can be changed but uh, yeah. because they're applying the shade to the zircon. I just had that happen. That's an easy fact. thing to go to finish. Yeah, yeah, I just had a case that case I was telling you about yesterday that we clo closed, yeah. she actually has a denture that she loves. I said, good, do you want it just like that? Yeah, so then we don't even need to remake the denture, just convert that one, send it to you to scan. And she has a backup denture. Okay, two to four weeks, she wears it, 
or they wear it, come back, remove, we just said this, remove the prototype, send a lab for scan and zircon milling. You're gonna have to have something that they were wearing before the prototype, which is which would either be a denture or a converted denture. Uses their temporary. Yeah. And then wow. Right. And, and then and then wow, we're like okay, so <laughs> we don't have the picture, but yesterday I delivered uh, a full arch zircon on a lady, Susan. Uh, husband's a, been a pharmacist here 35 years. I've called this guy on the phone a thousand times and finally brings his wife in and very uh, beautiful lady. I mean, I'm gonna, we should, you know what we should do is have her on personally and, sh and, and talk about that would the be great. That'd be great. I did a video. And, and, and you know what I'll do is the, to our attendees, I'll send them the pictures of the final case. Too. Okay. Send them in an email so you can see what it is. We'll, we'll send you right. some cases, but uh, Susan was just spectacular. We were looking at the pictures this morning. The, the cool thing I like about the Zircon when it comes back, if they've scanned it and it's precise, I hardly have to adjust a thing. I heard, you know, just, it's very rare that I have to adjust anything on a full Zircon. I mean, these, the modern CAD CAM technology it, it, is because, because you we, you've taken all the steps too. Well, we've already got so, the bite and perfect yeah. in the prototype. They're scanning the prototype. Uh, all The only X factor is mating you, you realize, doctors, that they take the zircon, uh, mill zircon bridge, they center it, which means basically heating it up really hot, put the color on it and all that. Then they have holes in it that they have to, to mate to new titanium cylinders uh, with bonding material, I assume, right? Yeah, we yeah. bond it. Rely X. So. so if that's what the only X factor is, do, did they seed it back down on the master model just perfectly? Well, it sure looks like they do to me because I... I don't even have to adjust a thing. This is a chance mm -hmm. for me to talk about something entirely separate for 30 seconds. Would you mind if I told Absolutely. them about that um, Calvin case? Sure. Okay, this is totally not, uh, well, it's an implant case. So I did a, a guy who's a chief engineer for Floor Daniel Corporation. You know, they build Saudi Arabia oil fields and all that. The guys, and the point I'm making is he's an engineer and he's a, he's, he thinks in terms, we're engineers, doctors, mm -hmm. and he knew everything everything I was doing. Oh, we have fittings like that. He, he was fascinated by it. I delivered a, every I, I restored every quadrant. He had, his, he had anterior teeth that were basically okay. So I did three unit bridges on all four quadrants. Actually, no, lower left was one crown. Now I think of it. The other was, were three unit bridges. I put in three three unit bridges. That's right. It was a, a total of seven or eight implants and one single unit crown. And this is how it went. So the box is huge, right? I pull it out of the box, there's all these crowns and everything. The models are there. I did a PVS bite reg. And I don't, you know, you guys went to completion. I, I thought maybe I was gonna do a bite reg, I mean, whatever. Mm -hmm. And I put every bridge in every crown in it slid in, I adjusted nothing. And the contacts were perfect. I had them bite down, it was perfect. I, I, I kept on grabbing for the handpiece. Uh, out of habit? <laughs> out of habit to start adjusting. And my assistant was laughing because there was nothing to which I thought, well, maybe it's out of occlusion. Maybe that's why it's quote right. No, he had perfect, I even took a picture of the blue dots on the buccal cusp, right down the central fossas, blue dots. Uh, lingual, tips of the lingual cusp on the upper. It was, you know, that's an aside, not okay. nothing. Uh, I'll just say that that's a that's my pitch for a program. Well, I think I would have to say you took all the steps, gave us all the. Are you giving me some credit? So, so, you're saying absolutely, right? Absolutely. Well, thank you. So I, I need a pat on the back every, every once in a while. <laughs> well, we're almost uh, okay. past time, oh, but if, if anybody has any questions, uh, you know, um, please uh, chat them to us, send them to us in our chat. And uh, you know what I want to hear most on chat is what the doctors want to hear about most in anything in implant prosthetics or anything really, because we're here to you know, like uh, just any questions that you have at all. You might think it's not a, a big deal, but we're fascinated by these questions. Yeah, Dr. Glatt, you know, is, thank you, Dr. Glatt, is agreeing. Um, Harley, I agree. I, I actually said to Greg a couple of years ago, what has changed with the technology? You described that it was basically just the, the precision of the- The digital. Uh, the digital, yeah. I yeah. mean, I used to have to adjust. I mean, come on. I mean, I look back in the day, you you, you were gonna adjust it a little bit. And uh, 
the precision of the digital of the scanning and digital dentistry is is a whole new world as we know. Uh, okay, guys. So uh, we were going to uh, talk about the next seminar, right? If we're planning another seminar, uh, I believe we're we're still coming up with the date on that, but it'll be within the next two weeks, uh, perhaps, or maybe right after well, Thanksgiving. Remember, oh, we were going to we, ask, and we've got some other questions here too. Um, from Dustin, is the wax rim screwed into the patient's mouth and how do you adjust the wax rim in and out, in and out? Okay, so we'll answer some questions here. Thank you for the questions, they're all, they're all coming in. Um, yes, so the wax rim is, of course, has an acrylic base plate and in that acrylic, they build the acrylic base plate around an abutment. And sometimes they'll do it just on, let's say it's an all in four case, you, they'll just do it on two of them uh, because that's enough of a reference point. Well, and hold it in place. To hold right. it in place, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, and then CJ. Yes, and it is a hassle to take it in and out because you have to unscrew it each time. <laughs> okay. And then CJ has more of a marketing question. Uh, I'm really curious about possibly watch you close a sale on a big case. She was wondering if you could ever, um, you know, put that on, on a tape. Or something. I, I thought of that actually, mm -hmm. uh, also for training of my uh, exactly. associate doctors in my mm -hmm. other offices. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. I don't know if we'll do it live, but uh, that's a great idea, CJ. And yes, we'll do that definitely. Okay. CJ's got a question. I don't know if we're getting that whole thing there. Thank you, Dr. Glatt. Appreciate all your questions and input. Yeah, everyone, I think it's been great. And then CJ says, we've been doing larger and larger cases, as Scott knows, but when we hit around 20,000 or so, um, it, it and ends uh, They ends tend to close when, something about the, around the 20 grand area. CJ, we're trying to read the Get last charged. part of it. It was a little typo. It says, when we hit around 20,000 or so, tend to lose, tend to lose. Oh, okay, tend to lose. It was just the spacing thing. Then when we get around 20,000 grand area and then it ended there, so I'm not sure. So, so, she's got, so she's got more pricing questions, I guess. And then Dr. Glatt does too, you know, what, what you charge. You <laughs> That's a, a very re pertinent question, uh, not pricing. Uh, Dr. Glatt uh, is asking a question, do you charge 15,000 for a single arch, not including the implant uh, placement? I just had that exact, um, this is a very good, this is a great question I, I, and, and hear me out on this. So if you look at $30,000 as being sort of the benchmark for what a full arch is, I see what you're saying, Dr. CJ. Uh, I'll answer that in a moment. So. If thirty thousand dollars is the benchmark, what is you know what's the split basically? Is the split going to be uh, for the implants going to be fifteen thousand and then prosthetics fifteen thousand? Well, you know, I think it. I think it just it could be a lot of things, but here's how I do it. So I consider forty thirty thousand dollars as a starting point. I had a case come in yesterday where the implants were done and done well at another office. I have her, I've had her in a snap denture for three, four, five years. And she finally said, you know what? Uh, I want to have a zircon. And by the way, this is one of the beautiful things about presenting uh, snap dentures as an option because a good percentage of them will then migrate on and become uh, zircons. Anyway, so there's a question. What did we charge her yesterday? We actually closed that case yesterday. $17,500. Here is our thinking. The implants are, our fee for implants are $2,250 per implant. If we do four or five implants, that's $9,000 or $11,500. I guess that would be, or $11,250. Deduct that from, I guess the $11,250 is what we deduct, and we came up with $17,500 uh, for the prosthetic part. Uh, I mean, honestly, the patients don't question or worry about a thousand or two thousand dollars difference. Maybe I'm a thousand dollars off on my math on that, but I, uh, knowing how difficult and charge, uh, challenging prosthetics is, for me to make a full arch zircon 
from from start to finish. That's going to be, I mean, seventeen five is not too much just for the prosthetics. And then CJ has a question, uh, you know, about uh, uh, she's uh, she's not talking about pricing, but she says she loses patient loses patients once they go over twenty the twenty grand mark. Um, uh, is that just a price point uh, issue or or just uh, a uh, I, no, I, I actually, I was, I was going to have another answer, like depends on your area or whatever, but you know what, mm -hmm. I'm in a pretty upscale area and I can, I see that. I, I see what you're saying, which is why so it's mentally from on the patient standpoint. Well, it should, I think they, it's, they have a limit. That, they have yeah. a limit. Exactly. And so uh, Dr. CJ, I, I would suggest, here's what I do. I present the snap denture. We call it the snap denture for colloquial uh, patient language. But present the the overdenture implant overdenture uh, as an option. Uh, I, I put it right out in front of them. I, I put three things in front of every one of these consultations. Three things: a full denture, a beautifully one, done one. I have it right here. I put a snap denture over locators, four locators, and then I put a zircon. And I say this one's six to seven thousand. This one's seventeen thousand. That's what a snap denture is. And this is thirty thousand. And your 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 zircon patients are a very unique breed. They've already been through the process. They've already had this tried or that tried. They okay. know they want zircon, and they know what it costs also. So they've already experienced maybe the the limitations of the others as well. They have, and they've also gone online and found out that other zircon that. The big boys are charging thirty thousand dollars, so they know it's thirty thousand dollars when they walk in. Mm -hmm. I, it, it's great having a highly educated patient base. Um, oh, great! And CJ she, is an office, she's an office manager. manager. Yeah, I CJ, thank you for coming. I've wanted. A, I want office. Can you let up more office managers know they? I would love. Uh, I want I want office managers part of this group as much as the doctors. Why? Because we're here just to have you guys. Uh, be more prosperous and expand and new office managers uh, they, they, they definitely rule. have sway in the office right so. well they're the queen they're the yeah. head of the office that yeah. we should be talking to them not the doctor scott yeah, there you go <laughs> <laughs> well now dustin asked a question he asked if you take payment plans that's more of a you have to type thing, so. i don't know i hardly know anyone that can just come up with thirty thousand dollars and by the way even okay here's a the, these are great questions. Even if they have the thirty thousand, I have that. I have fairly routinely the person has the thirty. They just sold their house. They just did this or that, or they're um, part of a casino band or whatever, and they just put their black Amex out there. They'll actually do the no interest financing, and it, because they just don't want to spend their money. So, you, so the financing is a must. It's like selling cars. You know, this kind of leads us back to uh, uh, some of the, some of the things we were talking about marketing. Um, you know, knowing what you want to focus in on your practice and uh, focusing in on these big cases. I mean, you can focus in on cleanings and and, and advertise that way. You've done something unique in your office that uh, that we haven't really mentioned here yet today, and that's you focus on adult dentistry because they generally have more money. And so, uh, uh, why, why do you do that? <clears throat> If I haven't already said it. <laughs> well, you kind of did. But um, so what Scott's asking is, you know. And there was a progression to get to that too. Why so. Why have I uh, branded my dental offices as centers for adult dentistry? And the simple reason is that that's where the big cases are generally. 95% like of large cases other than cosmetic dentistry and a 28-year-old or something, or someone who's in an auto accident or whatever, 90 to 95% of large cases are over the age of 55. And patients, are, and nowadays, patients are looking for people who are tailored to them. So why not say, well, why not say I specialize in 55 and over? And what I also discovered, and this but, is- But you still see other patients. But no. No, no, really? No. 
I didn't know that. I didn't know that. No. The only reason. So you've really focused on. on Yeah, I do not. We don't accept patients under the age of fifty. It's actually fifty, unless they're referred by their grandparents or parents. And then I'm not going to turn away. Yeah, just had a young guy in, knocked out his two front teeth in a bar fight. Well, okay, I put implants in eight and nine, immediate load. Sure, I'm going to do that case, but I'm not looking to do that case. That's not what our practice is about. That's not who you reach out to. Correct. To try to. So interesting. Okay, here's a good one from Dustin. How often do you see these patients to clean Zircon? Do you have all patients in night card? Really good question. Uh, thank you for that question, Dustin. Um, so you've, you've really got to set your hygiene department up entirely differently and your fees to, 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 because to open up the access holes, unscrew and unbolt a Zircon and then bolt it back in after the hygienist has gone around and cleaned and so forth. And you have to clean the bridge, it's the, the, the zircon bridge itself and the implants, take x-rays, verify, whatever. That's quite, it's a two hour uh, process for one arch. So um, can I tell a little story? I mean, everyone sure. hang on with one for one minute. You're not gonna believe, this is a true story. It just happened to me this week. I was doing this exact thing and I went in and I opened up the access holes and the right side was loose. It was an all on four case. And the back, um, I, I unscrewed the, like the number three position, went up to the number six position, unscrewed it, went to thir- uh, 11 and then 13, unscrewed those and it came out. Okay, good. Hygienist takes over, clean, clean, over in the ultrasonic is the zircon, clean, clean. I come in to screw things back together at 4.45 on on, uh, Wednesday. I'll never forget this. And I went to, I took the prosthetic, the little, I call it a mini screw or the prosthetic screw that goes in the multi-unit abutment. I put it down in there, boom, 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 boom. It's not biting. Keeps rotating, keeps rotating, keeps rotating. And I'm like, oh my God. And I, I tried this angle. What am I doing wrong? And at this angle, oh, I'm, I'm a big problem. Do you, you always use new screws when, you, when you're putting something <clears throat> back in as well? You, yes. You do? Okay. Yep. Is this a rule? And, well, in fact, if I had used the old screw, I might have noticed what the problem is, just to give away the hint. I was there f- until 5.15. I actually looked up 20 to 25 minutes doing just that. And, I'm, and uh, doctors, I don't know if you've gotten into a procedure where you actually think, what am I going to do? Like the equivalent would be you have a root tip on some mm-hmm. tooth you can't get. Am I going to have to send this person to the oral surgeon? Whatever it is, I literally was going. I got to get this, this guy's teeth back in his mouth. So. And I remembered a famous, famous incident in my life where my son-in-law, who's a uh, rocket, uh, works for JPL. You could call him a rocket scientist. He's a I rocket think, scientist, so. yeah. <laughs> and he, we, we were unable to dis- dissemble. You know how the bed frames go together and have the thing goes here, and then it's, the screws covered up with a wood plug and all that. We couldn't find it, and and I got frustrated and walked away. This was a few years ago, and I walked in, and he had his face about this close to the wood, and he was looking at. He's an engineer. He's building things. He runs the Mars. Thanks, CJ, for being here. Take yeah, care. Yeah, thanks for CJ. Take care. And <laughs> that's awesome. Come back, CJ. So bottom line is, I said, I'm going to do what my son-in-law did to the assistant, sort of allowed to myself. And I looked closely at the multi-unit abutment that I was trying to screw into. The screw had broken off in it, mm. right at the level. And you know how tiny those things are. Couldn't see it. So the adventures of prosthetics and the thing. So by the way, I put the other three in and went in in three minutes, mm. plugged up with some PVS. So I'll be back and I'll have to change that multi-unit abutment out by the way or get the screw broken screw out of that multi-unit abutment which which is uh, I, I, it's interesting so to take the broken screw out of that multi-abutment probably less is it less involved than taking an abutment or screw out of a regular well abutment? yeah for sure because it's accessible it's, okay. and it's right in front of you we'll probably take a uh, so, so, so it makes a case for these multi-abutments really that makes a case for that's another reason you it's want the multi-units because if they break you can re- you know, the screw breaks. Mm-hmm. Anyway, interesting little story. The adventures of prosthetics. Yeah. Well, I think we're out of time. Oh, we're out of time. But okay. uh, appreciate everybody hanging in here for us for uh, our webinar, and appreciate Dr. Cuts and him willing to being willing to share his expertise with us. Uh, we're just getting started. This is our second webinar uh, together, and and we're planning uh, more uh, on a consistent basis. So. Well, I'm having a fun time. So are you? I'm having a good okay, time too. Good. I'm learning we're a lot do it too. Again. So uh, and 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 we at the lab really appreciate Dr. Cuts and all that he does. So. Thank you all for uh, coming in. 
um, you know, please send us your questions and your concerns yeah. and, and uh, have a great weekend. Thanks, so, guys. Thank yeah. you. Take care now. Thanks, guys.